Graceful yet imposing is George Washington Bridge. Spanning the Hudson River from upper New York, it leads to the New Jersey shore and the pond. But New York is not only steel and stone, it is people too. Millions of beating hearts, lights and shadows, night and day. A strange cosmopolitan paradox. A city that never sleeps. It's a wonder city. the dichotomy is really be behind who's considered powerful and experienced and who's considered, you know, I don't want to talk to them after they speak on a panel. They don't have social capital for me to gain. I know human nature isn't such that we're just going to give up, you know, the hierarchies of power and who has funding behind them and all these financial things. I know that that's a pipe dream, but at the same time, it would be really nice to see it be celebrated at the level of the high level political firm. Wow, that person works so close to the center of things. Let me go learn from them. Let me go sit at their feet and say, you know what? You've lived through that. That's important. Let me listen. And I, I know that that doesn't just get flipped and it's not easy and I'm like really oversimplifying, but I just don't know if that's the value. And so the youth is relevant there because so many youth are the end receivers of exclusion, violence, injustice. What you're saying is what we are working on as a country back at home in Kenya. We, we saw there's a gap between most of the young people, most of us were placed at a certain level. It's either internship or attachments and stuff like that. You can never be at the senior level. It was almost like, you know, that one is just meant for a particular group of people and then you're just meant to be just stuck here, stagnant. But now what we have is a, a shadowing program where uh, a senior person in any organization, mostly in government, because that's where we have the, the most issue, has to be shadowed by a young person. Because we realize that's how, the only way we can have continuity in such, certain offices, and especially critical offices, we realize a lot of them don't have anyone to pass it through. So someone will end up being of past even retirement age, but we can't remove them because they're the only people with the experience and the know-how of running that particular department. But now having a young person shadowing that, we're able to pass on that experience. We pat them with the knowledge and the wisdom, and it's able to now have a continuity and path. And also the young person can be able to benefit and take their place in the rightful position. Let me challenge that. If, if I may, if I... The whole of Kenya? <laughs> I mean, it's a... No, I don't know the context, but I mean, I'm just going to, you know, I, I work with young people and uh, you talk a lot about youth inclusion. I think, like, the part of youth inclusion, it's it kind of has to, like, bring a new perspective and voice to the, you know, to, to governance-related issues and not, like, necessarily following the... and learning from them and, you know, passing yeah. the torch. And, and it... And, you know, I don't know, I really don't, don't like get me wrong, but how diverse is the participation of young people in those areas? We need both senior and the young ones. So senior has some expert and the young ones, they are growing, they come with something new idea. So I think both of them need each other in order to make a change. Change is always good, but rapidly change is not good. So the, the shadowing isn't that they have to now copy paste what they're getting. The shadowing is for them to learn the max and now make it their own path. Because you can't make it your own path if you don't have the understanding to the Yeah, office. but the senior can also learn something new from the youth. So you see this other senior person has been in such a space for such a long time, they can't see outside that gap. And that's where the young person comes in to impart their knowledge. So one of the things that I speaking about passing the torch was where uh, I've heard one of uh, someone told me like that a senior person uh, uh, ex senior person of that country doesn't know how to open emails, <laughs> and 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 it really like when you are talking about the generational gap of that difference in the 21st century, like you really cannot like in America here, 
or global now is the young people who are starting new tech, new information, new changes. So new economy. a new economy. So if you are talking about a, a minister of finance who knows how to do the paper pushing, but don't know how to open an email Indesa, or, yeah. and, and, or just or how to use a digital exchange in DESA, and then he's saying like, oh, can you send me this amount of money to this ex? That is a handicap right there. So you got to give the young generation an opportunity to shine. At the end of the day, it's just if you don't equip those skills in early stage, then they wouldn't pass in a torch. It doesn't mean anything to them. Just you got to have to include them in the early stage of the change. And if if we're looking for in the developing country, mainly specifically in Africa, I would say the young people have a fresh ideas and they need to be in charge of their future. Well, when you talked about changing earlier, one thing I'm very aware of that I have core beliefs inside, but like sometimes I realize I'm getting older because I don't speak up or as passionately as I used to. And I'm like a little, little more jaded. So I need younger people to remind me to like always speak up and speak out because I just get, I would never be passive, don't worry. But, the, I, but I, 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 I lose my, um, I don't want to say freshness, that sounds horrible, but uh, I lose my, my fire. The MPS was made by a student in Nairobi University and they're given a chance for him to work at Safaricom. Right now he's an employee for Safaricom and he's on his own level and even he has created another service called Fuliza. So meaning we are now listening, we are now action. Before it was more of yeah, taking that, yeah. it and then, you know, let yeah, it drive it's, it's, itself. It's kind of a different, the, the contact. It's in terms of you talking about a, a, a business aspect of it. Yeah. That's really, I mean, they have to change that because that's where the future is. Okay. And in fact, the business community is changing it, but rather it's the bureaucracy of the government that is hard to change. And don't want to yank people to you. So that's quite a difference. Okay, I get that too, but I can, I can speak this because I'm an experience. We never had a youth delegate from Kenya. I'm the first. So meaning we are actually changing. It's a progress. Yes. I want to kind of like jump in the, like I want to say something about this too, because it's like, what is, when we talk about young people's inclusion or participation in global forum or in their governance, national governments, yeah. it's a, I think one thing we really need to pay attention that the unique power of young people, and that is not really techno, I mean, it's a little bit technocracy too. I mean, they know how to use softwares, developing new technologies. I think youth inclusion becomes powerful when they're acting, you know, when young people start acting collectively yeah. in the civic space. Yeah.